this talk, while you might think as it unfolds, doesn't have anything to do with crypto, you're absolutely wrong. This talk has everything to do with crypto. And the reason why is because what I've been explaining to you guys and what I've been working on with you while the charts are down and while there's not a lot of excitement, Bitcoin's going sideways for 19 months. What I've been working on you guys with is your mindset to get you prepared so that when the prices go up, you actually sell your crypto. You know, I didn't sell near enough crypto, but I sold enough crypto that if I never even opened a wallet again, I could live out all my days. Okay. So I did better than most. And what I want for you guys is we're going to have another opportunity here in, in the short run. And I want you to take full advantage of the opportunity. So I'm actually going to label this talk. And the label I'm going to give it, which again, you may think as it unfolds, doesn't relate, but it does. And the label is you, when I say you, I look down the list of people here that ask questions every week. Elaine, David, Peter, Gary, Dick, Sage, Mike, Ryan, uh, Reed. More, there's a lot of Davids. Jared, Rusty, Cynthia, P I mean, on and on. Jay Fly, Jerry, right? When I look at those names, I'm talking to you. So when I say you, that's who I'm talking to, talking to you guys. You are way more magnificent than you think you are. You're way more magnificent than you think you are. And I come up with this sometimes in a really weird roundabout way, but if you'll allow me to talk it through with you, I think you'll see what I mean. My wife and I, we have a lot of conversations back and forth, and she is in a pretty, still a pretty good sized counselor role for a fair amount of ladies. Um, I still do some counseling, not as much as I used to do. I don't charge for my counseling today. The counsel is for those that have the ability to get to to reach me and get to me, so to speak. Um, but in, in listening to people on the telephone and listening to people face to face with me, here's what here's here's what you learn. You learn by listening to what's coming out of their mouth. What you can hear is that people are suffering. And if you listen closely, this is the most profound part, you will learn that they are suffering not because of anything the world is doing. They're doing all their suffering in their mind. You guys are probably right now thinking to yourself about yourselves. You're thinking about those things in your life that make a lot of difference right now and how that's affecting you, and, 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 and is it really something that's in my mind? And I can, I'm here to tell you that it is. All suffering comes from the mind. It does not ever come from the world. And I'll tell you something else. Your thoughts are usually, and this is, I'm going to say usually like, let's go to 90 plus percent, maybe 95 percent, your thoughts are usually so much more full of drama than the reality of what it is that you're suffering from. So you have all these thoughts and you have all these ideas in your head. And what, what, what do you think feeds that drama and turns that into something more magnificent? It's television. It's the wrong YouTube channel. It's also talking about your problem. A lot of people have something going on. They pick up their phone. They tell the 10 closest people to them, all about their problem. And you know what that does? It gives your problem energy. It makes it worse. Words are containers and they carry, you know what they carry? They carry energy. So the basis of my talk is based on the fact that most people, when you listen to what's coming out of their mouth, they're suffering. If I'm talking to someone and you know, they're down about crypto, right? Oh man, I just hope crypto, you can, you can hear from the beginning of the conversation, boy, I just hope crypto goes back up. Everything they've been thinking about in their mind is that crypto is not going to go back up. What are they manifesting in their life? Because they can't get past the idea of just hoping crypto will go back up, 
when it does go back up, they screw the whole damn thing up. They screw it all up. Their mind, they're suffering so bad in their mind over the hope, over the idea that maybe possibly one day it will go back up, that they actually can't prepare the mind like they should be to get themselves ready for that day when I'm sitting here going, okay, guys, you got a decision to make. Cardano's at 650. What are you doing? Cardano's at seven dollars. What are you doing? And people are listening to me at their desk, biting their fingernails off because they haven't prepared the soil, which is the mind. Their mind has been completely taken up with suffering. And most of which the drama of that suffering is so much greater in the mind. I mean, I myself have found, have fallen prey to this all through my life a lot less today than ever before. I never come to you guys and talk about a topic that I have mastered. I come and talk to you about a topic that I'm working on mastering. Working on mastering. Why? Because it makes for a better life, right? So while what I'm talking to you about will serve you in all of your life, it'll serve you in your marriage, whatever that happens to be, It'll serve you in your relationship with your children, whatever that happens to be. It'll serve you in your workplace, whatever that happens to be. Because, again, if you, if you, if you hit the rewind button, one of the big things that I've talked to you guys about for years now is taking control of your mind. And that, that how important that is. If you don't take control of your mind, then the mind is walking the human not the human walking the mind. In fact, I would go so far as to say your thoughts, your thoughts, those that for most of you are causing you anguish, for most of you they're torturing you, your thoughts are actually your greatest tool. But most of you, not all of you, I can tell by the words coming out of your mouth, not all of you, you use it as your slave master. You use it as your torturer. And I'm saying, yes, you use it is because you decide. You decide to be so busy that you can't take eight minutes and lay on your beamer and have a meditation, have a little prayer with God. When I lay on my beamer twice a day, that's two times a day that I get the opportunity to pray. And so I pray both times I'm on my beamer. And then I set out time during my day to spend between 15 minutes and an hour meditating. I know that time takes more. I can usually be unbelievably grateful in eight to 12 minutes to my maker. And so my Beamer time is my prayer time. I put on some really good, unbelievable piano music and I pray to God. And 99.99999% of my prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving for how amazing life is in my circle. From the fact that all my fingers and toes work, the fact that my brain is so sharp, the fact that my heart is so strong, the fact that my hair is so thick at my age, the fact, the fact that my eyesight is so unbelievable, all the things I'm grateful and thankful for that God gives me the ability to go tackle anything I choose to tackle. I have it right at my fingertips. So again, what are you using your thoughts for? Because as I said, most of you, it's your great, it's your great, it is all of yours greatest tool, but most of you aren't using it as your greatest tool. Most of you are suffering and I'm sorry that you're suffering. That's why I'm bringing awareness to your suffering today. By bringing awareness to your suffering, if five people today, if 10 people today that hear this, I mean, by the time the weekend gets here, you know, we're going to have a lot of people that have heard this message. And if five or 10 or 15 or 20 people that hear this message make the click, they change the channel, they tune in on a different frequency, then it was worth me talking about today. Because some people... I can already feel the energy from some people that are like, oh, great, he's talking about mindset again. Yet those are the very people that didn't sell any crypto, and they think it's so easy 
CryptoJ gives you the target, tells you where it's going, it gets there and you don't sell it. <laughs> Stupid. I'm saying that to myself too. Stupid. You got to get real with yourself. The, 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 the setting of your mind is everything. And if we have all these months of crypto going sideways, why not reinforce? Why not, why not get all the weeds out of, out of your soil? Why not get yourself completely prepared? Do you guys know why I chose the word effortlessly when I say to you guys that great wealth, great wisdom, great health comes to me effortlessly? I didn't choose the word effortlessly by, by, by chance. I actually chose it very much on purpose, and I'll tell you why. The more effortlessly you make your life, the easier you manifest your life. Everything just comes to you. It's as, it's as easy as breathing. But a lot of people go, well, if you're, if you're just expecting effortless, then you must not be doing anything. Well, listen, I just told you, my calendar is slam-packed October, November, December. I'm busy. I'm busy doing stuff, right? But here's the difference. Being effortless does not mean that you're doing nothing. Being effortless doesn't mean that you're sitting around just chanting the effortless chant. No, what it means is you're in motion and you're doing something, but everything you're doing is being done effortlessly. It's not work. Why? Because Effort comes from the ego and effort comes from the mind. When you have effort, the universe, here's what the universe hears when you have effort. Um, I don't have this thing that I need. Uh, I need this so much. God, I must get this. this. This must work for me. Jeez, it's so hard. Every time I set out to do it, it just seems like it's harder and harder. That's what universe hears when you have effort. That's not what I want the universe to hear. I want the universe to hear, I'm blessed coming and going. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm the top, not the bottom. Everything I put my hand to is amazing. None of my days go wasted, right? I'm in the effortless mindset. The setting of my mind is effortless. That's why so much shit just comes to me. It just keeps coming to me and it keeps coming to me because my mindset is in the right place. So the only signal that my brain is putting out, the only 5G I'm putting out is that this is effortless. Life's amazing. Life's tremendous. We'll go back to what I said earlier. What feeds the drama? in your mind is the wrong television, the wrong YouTube channel. Talking about things makes it way bigger. Well, guess what I'm talking about? I'm talking about how amazing it is. So again, I say to you again, your thoughts can be your greatest tool, but most of you use it as your slave master. It tortures you on and on and on. And if I didn't care, I'd just keep this message for myself. It was given to me inspirationally. I just keep it to myself and go, wow, that's fantastic for me. This is fantastic. And I would just go about my business. But I care. I care when some of you here that are listening are friends of mine for 20 years and you call me up and go, oh, man, I just wish of all things, I just wish I'd have sold more crypto. Man, the things I could be doing right now, the things I had planned. Guess what? They still haven't planned. They still haven't planned. They're just having to suffer while they wait, while they hope that the Bitcoin happening takes Bitcoin up yet again. Do you guys understand that nothing comes into form unless there is something observing it? Nothing in this physical world ever comes into form unless there's something observing it. Quantum physics has proved this over and over and over. So guess what? 
what are you thinking about? Because whatever you're thinking about, you're actually observing it. Ooh. Ooh. How dramatic is what you're thinking about? The mortgage, this business, I got to get started. Man, this crypto has got to go up eventually. What is it you're thinking about? Because when you're thinking about it, you're observing it. It could be, it could be, that observation of yours could be your greatest tool. But most of you use it as your slave master, your torturer. See, I'm actually talking to the bulk of people here. I'm not talking to the minority. There's a group of people here that are absolutely freaking getting it right. There's a group of people here that are just like me. Their lives are on fire with greatness. They know how magnificent they are. By the way, for anybody here who may think, boy, Jay's off on his, uh, he's off on his uh, new age thinking again. No, I'm going to tell you something, guys. What I'm talking to you about in so many words is written all through that Bible you carry. It's written all through that Bible that you carry to church. You dust it off once a week and carry it to church with you so you can follow along with your pastor. It's written all through there. How magnificent you are is written all through there, starting with, I made you in my image. It's not new age thinking. It's old age thinking. It's very old age thinking. It's just you've been indoctrinated to believe a certain way because you allow other people to plant seeds of thoughts in your head, and then you dramatize them over and over and over again. You get to do it 80,000 times a day. What I would remind you of over and over, and what you should write down, you guys should write this down and meditate on this. Nothing comes into form unless there is something observing it. Nothing. So when you look at how horrible your life is, and when you look at how amazing your life is, you can actually go back over a number of days, weeks, months, years, whatever it is, and just look into what you were thinking about. What? Because as you were thinking about it, do you think in pictures or do you think in words? If I say, hey, there's a uh, two-legged, there's a three-legged dog with a tail that's been braided. Did you see the words or did you see the picture? Right? You saw the picture. It's just how the brain works. It's just how it was designed to work. You are an observing machine. You are so magnificent. Like some of you are, you're producing some of the worst shit any person ever produced in their life. That's how magnificent you are. Now, change the channel. Just change the channel, make a shift, and produce the most magnificent thing you really wanted in your life. And get out of the shit. Go beyond the shit and get to the glory. <laughs> you guys are following me. I'm trying to be a little comical here. It's kind of a heavy topic. But really, be magnificent in the right way. Direct your magnificentness. Direct it. Look, I don't know all of you. OK, but I'm encouraging you and I believe in you. If you're here still seven years later, sticking with crypto after all the mistakes you've made, you're a group of people I want to be connected to. I believe in every single one of you. I don't know you, most of you. I don't know. I don't know. Ninety five percent of you. I've gotten to know a little bit, maybe five percent of you. And I've gotten to know pretty good 1% of you by design, just by design. But all of you I believe in, all of you I believe have the seeds of greatness in you. I'm talking about one of them right now. I'm talking about changing your mind from being a tool for suffering, change it to a tool for greatness. Go be that magnificent person. If you can't look in the mirror today and look at yourself and go, you're phenomenal. Work on that. 
You know how to work on that, by the way, for those of you that don't believe in yourself? I'm going to give you a little tip. And this tip, in a roundabout way, is from my wife. Because all through my life, I heard that love conquers all. But you don't really, most people don't really have that many examples of how love conquers all. My wife has showed me many examples of how love conquers all. So you want to feel better about yourself. You want your self-image to go up. You want it to go up faster rather than slower. Certainly, there's things you need to put in your head. You need to read. You need to listen to audios. You need to do all those things. But, but let's speed that up. Here's how you speed that up. Try, begin to take control of your mind by doing one thing. All through your day, every time you catch yourself having an idle moment, just begin to say, if you can out loud, there's something very powerful that happens when the words come out of your mouth and back into your ear gates. So if you can say it out loud, say it out loud. If you can't say it out loud, but you find yourself having some idle time, begin to sit there and, and literally state all the things in your life that you love. All of them. I can't come up with all the examples. You can say, boy, I really love the home I live in. I love that I don't live on the street. I love that I have a home that I can sleep indoors with my family. Boy, I love the relationship I have with my partner. Boy, I love the, the automobile that I drive. When I, when I see people standing out on the street homeless begging, the first thing, the first thing that goes through my mind and does for the next five minutes is how grateful I am for my life. Because if you observe them, if you observe what they're doing and you begin to talk about it, you know what you do? You give a little bit of energy to that in your life. And so it's a reminder to me to be grateful and thankful of how my life is. I'm not even going to say the fact that I'm not living that way. No, no, I don't want that thought in my head. What I want in my head is how grateful I am for the life I'm living. So thankful for the trees in my yard that give off such great oxygen for us to breathe. Love, love, love the trees in my yard. Love, love, love the fact that I can put the best Michelin tire on every car I own. Love that I can spend and invest 45,000 a year into my health. I love the uh, quiet times I have with my spouse. Just start going through and listing all the things you love. Can I just tell you, you can't do that for so long before your self-image goes up and you begin to look at yourself in the mirror a little bit differently. And the reason why is because you're bringing awareness. <laughs> here, here it is, guys. You're bringing awareness within your thought patterns of just how magnificent you and your life really are by continuing to talk about all the things in your life that you love. Love the fact that I got into crypto when I did. Love the fact that I've had the lessons I've had that serve me in my future. So it's a little secret for you, but I'm telling you now, and I'll end with this, you guys are way more magnificent than you think you are, way more. And I hope that you'll, you'll go away from today, you'll listen to this a few times, and you'll begin to work on being as magnificent as you are. Your self-confidence will go up. Your self-image will go up. Everybody around you will notice a shift and a change in your vibration, in your energy. Everyone. And then next time you see someone you haven't seen in six months, they'll go, gee, you've really changed. I can tell you guys from six months ago, I've changed a ton. I can tell you that, that six months ago, from six months before that, I had changed and become a different person. The change is, I can mark the change on my calendar in my life because I am working I'm working on being the most magnificent that I think I am.
I'm working on that so I can mark the changes as they happen day to day, week to week, month to month. All right, guys, I hope that serves some people here. I really, really do. I have a, a feeling that's heavy on my shoulders that it does affect a lot of people here. And that if you'll take that, you'll begin to understand a little bit more about the whole thing when I say to you, all these things that come to us effortlessly. It's not about being idle on the couch. It's about being active and busy and keeping your calendar full. But as you do the things you do, you do them effortlessly. And you become the most magnificent you that you can become, which, by the way, is a journey. It's not a destination. I want to I want to 10 years from now, I want everybody around me to go, my God, you're a different person than you were 10 years ago. That's what I want to hear him say. Five years from now, I want to hear him say that. That's up to me. That's up to me to become great, to become magnificent. And I don't mean that in an egotistical way of some guy standing in a, you know, in, a, in an auditorium talking about how great or magnificent they are. I'm talking about being the best human you can be. Being a good product to the world. All right, we'll go to your questions for 20 minutes, guys.